the FBI in peace and war. And now tonight's story, the fourth round. All right, that's enough for now. Eddie. Come in, Max. Come here, kid. Okay, but I'm fresh as a daisy, Max. I could go a couple rounds more, easy. That's enough, Eddie. I just wanted Mr. Rizzo here to see how you look. Get yourself a shower, huh? Okay, the boys. See you, Mr. Rizzo. Yeah. All right, Tony, we can go in my office. Sure, the quicker we get down to business, the better I like it. Sit down, Tony. Sit down. Help yourself to smoke. Don't mind. There's some matches right over there. Yeah. So, Tony, how do you like my boy? Eh, he's a pug. He's got two fists, so what? He's a good boy, that Eddie. So he's a good boy. Did you notice his left, like I told you, the way he throws it? Look, Max, I see your boy, I see his left. Now, supposing we cut the double talk, what's your proposition? Okay. Tony, I got Eddie a match with Kid Cochran next month. You know that. Go on. Cochran's a bum. With his bad record, the books will have Eddie a four-to-one cinch. Now, uh, a guy betting five, ten thousand on Cochran could really clean up. If Cochran comes through. Right. Okay, so what's the angle? Oldest angle in the business, Tony. Yeah? Sure. My boy Eddie has a bad night. Can't seem to get off right. Fourth round comes up, catches one on the chin. Referee counts him out. He does a dive. Sure, he does. You and me clean up a fortune. Is that a proposition? It's a proposition. Eddie's a good boy, Tony, but he could never be champ. I've been building him up for a killing like this. Uh huh. Sounds pretty good. Why cut me in? Careful, aren't you, Tony? Why? Why? Because I have to. Yeah? Can't very well place the bet myself, can I? How would it look? A manager betting against his own boy. Who'd take the bet? Okay. What about the boy? Oh, Eddie? He does what I tell him. Yeah, sure. Besides, uh, he's nuts for that wife of his. And his wife likes pretty things. She does, huh? Mm-hmm. She likes pretty things, and uh, she don't like Eddie. Oh. Who does she like? Do we have a deal, Tony? You sure you can swing this, Max? I'm sure. Okay, we got a deal. You keep building Eddie up. Don't worry, Tony. By the time the fight rolls around, I'll have Eddie looking like a sure thing. Put the left, Eddie, and hold it close. Fuck it. Out of boy, that's it. That's the way. <laughs> nice work, Max. Those odds are climbing steady. Keep building them up. Okay, Eddie, now you got it, boy. Get yourself a shower. Good, Max, fine. Just keep it up and we'll be set for the big money. Two hundred and eighty-five, two ninety-five, three hundred. Is that all they lent you on the coat, Eddie? What'd you expect? A million bucks for a few measly skins? Oh, no, honey, of course not. But we gotta hold, uh, gotta get a hold of every dollar we can lay our hands on. How about the ring? Well, now, read it. That was your wedding present. Besides... Okay, okay, forget it. Besides, it's crazy putting all this dough on Cochran. Oh, Eddie, honey, how many times I know, do I, I have I know, I know, it's to... a sure thing and we can use the dough. I know all that. But I, I still don't like the idea of taking a dive. The money we win will be awfully nice, Eddie. I could kill Cochran. Eddie. I know, but... Come here, honey. Rita. Come here. Close to me. That's it. Baby. I'm a dope, ain't I? Yeah? Yeah, I'm a dope. Wanting my husband to get out of the fight game. Rita. Wanting us to take a steak before his brains are mashed up. Before it's too late to quit. Oh, honey. Eddie, listen. 
When this thing pays off, we can get a little business, maybe. Settle down to a good life, you and me, and time for each other. Rita. That's why I want you to do this, Eddie. For you and me, together. You see? Yeah, sure, I, I see, Rita. You do what Max tells you, Eddie. He never steered you wrong yet, did he? No, of course he didn't. Only... Only what? Nothing, I guess. That's right, honey. You do what he tells you. Now, go on. Go to bed. Get some sleep. Remember, Max is supposed to be building you up. Hellman's Jim. Hello, Max. Rita. Oh, hello, Rita. How'd it go? Just like I said it would. I know how to handle Eddie. He's convinced? Completely. Oh, that's great news, Rita. Where's he now? Tucked safe in bed, sleeping like a baby. Uh Uh-huh. Meet me? Same place? Same place, Max. I'm on my way. To you and me, Rita. And, uh... What your husband don't know won't hurt him. To you and me, Max, and easy street right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Max. Mm-hmm. How long am I going to have to put up with him? You tell me. After this fight? That's it, sugar. After this fight, you can walk out on him for good. You and me, then, huh, Max? You and me, baby. And no more sneaking off to bars. Well, it can't happen soon enough for me. I'm so fed up with that stupid lunk and his cauliflower ears. Sure, could... sure, baby. And you stay with it till we hit the jackpot, huh? Uh, all he knows is his hook and his jab, his jab and his hook. That's all he knows. Oh, uh, Rita. I know, Max. Stay with it. I will. And what about my dough? Everything's set. Tony placed the bet with Arnie Buckman. 10,000 on a fourth round knockout. Our share will come to over 50 G's. 50? Oh, Max. You like that, Rita? <laughs> Do I? Okay. You just keep Eddie in line through the night of the 8th. And like you said, easy streets right around the corner. And they're asking all along the main stem what gambler, still on federal parole, has been taking special interest in the workouts of Eddie Fallon over Hillman's gym. Better look into this, Mr. Boxing Commissioner. FBI, good morning. Just a moment, I'll connect you. Good morning, Miss Blaine. Oh, good morning, Mr. Bailey. FBI, good morning. Identification? One moment, please. Is Mr. Shepard in his office? Uh, yes, he's waiting for you. Okay. Who's in there with him? Uh, Mr. Carlson of the State Boxing Commission. Hmm, maybe I can get myself a free ticket to the fight. <laughs> get two, why don't you? I'll try. Hello, Frank. Come on in. Oh, Shep. Frank, I want you to meet Mr. Carlson of the Boxing Commission. I think we've already met, Shep. Yeah, we certainly have. How are you, Mr. Bailey? Fine, thanks. Yourself? Couldn't be better. Good. This is about Tony Rizzo, isn't it? That's right, Frank. The commissioner's worried about it. I thought he might be after reading that item in Dawson's column. Well, I was telling Mr. Shepard that's all the information I had to go on, just that item in the column. Uh Uh-huh. And then I checked with the parole board, and I found that Rizzo was a federal parolee in this state. And that's when I got in touch with the Bureau. I see. Now, I want boxing to be a clean sport in this state, Mr. Bailey. There's no room in it for ex-racketeers. Of course, you realize, Commissioner, that there's nothing illegal in even an ex-racketeer hanging around a particular fighter. I know, Mr. Shepard, I know that. But ever since the Tiger Smith incident, well, I've gone overboard in being especially careful. I understand. There may be something going on and there may not. But it would be possible to keep Tony Rizzo's activities under surveillance, wouldn't it? I think so, within limitations. Well, that's all the Boxing Commission asks, Mr. Shepard. And the sooner it begins, the better. Oh, we've begun already, Commissioner. You've what? Well, just after you called, I checked through Rizzo's record. It's the kind of a record that has the word surveillance written all over it. Well, thanks, Mr. Shepard. That's the way I like things done. Oh, nothing's been done yet, Commissioner. I guess the first move is up to Tony Rizzo. <laughs> Rizzo speaking. Hello, Rizzo. This is Arnie Buckman. Yeah, Arnie. About that bet I took on Kid Cochran. Yeah? 
I'd like to see you about that bed, Reed, so stay at your hotel. I'm coming over. Well, look, I'm sort of busy, honey. Stay in your room, Reed, so I'm coming over. <laughs> I'll get up, Reed, so this won't take long. Uh, what's the trouble, Arnie? You know Sid, Nick, don't you? Sure he knows us. Hello, Reed, sir. Well, what's the trouble? Like I told you over the phone, it's about that bet you place with me. Sit down, boy. Yeah, sure. Well, what about the bet, Arnie? You're, uh, sweating, Reed, so. What's the matter? It's hot in here? Arnie... What about the bet, huh? Ten G's on Kid Cochran by a K.O. on the fourth. Yeah? Here's your ten G's back, Reed, so bet's off. Well, now, wait a second, Arnie. What is this? The bet's off. You shouldn't have tried to pull a deal like that on me, Reed, so. Pull a deal? With a tank dive? What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You didn't think I'd take a bet from a punk like you without checking up on it, did you? What? Cost me 200 bucks to check up, Reed, so, but it was worth it. 200 bucks and a bottle of whiskey. Listen. Close your yap, Rizzo. Punk like you, guy bets on Cochran, chums that he Fallon's manager needs checking out. And he said, said close your yap. One of Fallon's handlers talk, Rizzo. He spilled the beans for a couple of C's and the whiskey. I don't believe it. He couldn't know anything. He knows that Eddie Fallon's supposed to take a dive in the fourth. He knows that Max Stacy's been building the boy up for a big killing. Listen, Arnie. Yo, Listen. Eddie Fallon's gone in a ring, an 18 to 5 favorite. My syndicate's gone deep on Fallon. You know what that means, aren't you? Randy, what are you going to do? I'm not going to do anything, Reed, so. <laughs> but you're going to tell Max Stacy what I'm telling you. Eddie Fallon don't take that dive in the fourth, you understand? You and Max don't want a different kind of killing. Eddie Fallon don't take any dive at all. Okay, boss, let's go. Well, isn't that sweet? Isn't that just sweet? Hold your voice down, will you, Rita? Eddie fights Cocker on level, and what happens to us? But Rita... But Rita, don't but Rita me, Max. The easiest money we ever had in our lives, and we're going to lose it. Lose what? Tony got the money back from Buckman, didn't he? Your money he got back. What about mine? Five thousand of my own money. Now, Rita... My money wasn't placed with Buckman. What about that? I've hawked every single thing I own on this fight. Will you please hold your voice down? Oh, shut up. I'm not letting easy money go out of the window, I'll tell you that. I don't see what you can do about it, Rita. Now, maybe I can't. But you can do plenty. Me? Yeah, you. What can I do? You told me it would be you and me after this fight. You can see that it is. What? You can go ahead with the fight the way you plan. That's what you can do. Go ahead. Are you out of your mind? I want that money, Max. You know what Tony said? Buckman's a killer. Let go of me, Max. Take your hands off me. What do you want me to do? Take get blood full of holes? Take your hands off me. You told me you were a man and I believed you. Hey, how could I have been such a sap? You better go home, Rita. Go home and sleep this off. Sure. Sure, I'm going. But I think you're making a mistake, Max. I really think you are. Rita... Yeah. Why don't you douse that cigarette and let me get some sleep? No, not until you give me an answer, Eddie. Now, stop that, will you? I gave you an answer. Did you? Read it. Eddie, we got too much at stake in this. I'm not letting Max toss it down the drain. Stop it, Rita. You hear me? Stop talking like that. It's so simple. All you have to do is take a dive like we planned. No, Rita. Listen to me, honey. No. Listen. Max made a deal with us, and it's going to stick. We got everything we own on this fight. I'm not going to let you throw it away. Reed, I... I can't. Who says you can't? Our bets aren't with Buckman. We can do what we please. What about Max and Tony Reed? What about them? They don't have to know a thing until after the fight's over. Then what? You heard what Buckman said? So I heard what he said. What are we, nursemaids? Max and Tony can take care of themselves. 
Oh, Rita. What do we care about Tony or Max? We got a nice, easy living coming to us after this fight. That's all we care about. No. Max got us into this. Now he can get us out. You and me together. No more fight games. Please, Rita. Oh, come here, honey. Now, stop it. Come here. You and me together, honey. You and me the way we said. And all you have to do is lie down in the fourth. Oh, Rita. You do it, won't you, honey? You do it for me. Rita. There's nothing to it, Eddie. It's simple. All you have to do is lie down in the fourth. <laughs> Memorandum to Shepard, 48-hour surveillance on Tony Rizzo has turned up several interesting items. Suggest immediate conference with boxing commissioner, Bailey. Well, there you have it, Commissioner. The complete story on Tony Rizzo for the past two days, along with accompanying reports on Max Stacy and Arnie Buckman. Well, I hope it doesn't mean anything, Mr. Shepard. There's never been anything about Stacy's record that should make me suspicious. I... I hope he isn't mixed up with men like these two. I hope not. But anyway, as Mr. Bailey has already explained, there's nothing actually illegal about it, even if he is. On top of that, I've checked with the parole board, Commissioner. So far as it's concerned, Tony Rizzo has been a model citizen, runs a legitimate sports ticket agency, and reports on schedule to his parole board. Well, a man like Rizzo doesn't hang around bookie joints and fight managers for love of the sport, Mr. Bailey. I still feel he's up to something. Well, so do we, but unfortunately, that's not enough for us to go on. Yes, of course. We're having our own photographer at the ringside, Commissioner. The slow-motion cameras will pick up every detail of the fight. But in the meantime, there's nothing we can do but wait, huh? I'm afraid so. Rizzo and Buckman may be up to something, and maybe not. But it isn't a crime for them to be seen together. We'll just have to wait until that something comes out in the open. <laughs> Okay, this is it. Ring a bell, Sid. Buckman. Uh-huh, it's me. Want to see you, Tony. Close the door, boys. Sure. Yeah. Nick? Arnie, what are you doing Take here? Take it easy, Tony. I want to drop by and see you. Some reason I shouldn't? No, but I was just on my way Tony. out. Arnie. And... Arnie says, take it easy. Why don't you do that? Sure, relax. You live longer. I... You got a radio here, haven't you, Tony? A radio? Why? To catch the fight. You wouldn't want to miss the fight. Well, I'm not going to miss it. I was just leaving for the stadium. You'll hear the fight here, Tony. Eh? Listen, I got seats. You'll hear it here. Tony, a lot of smart money has been spread over town to Kid Cochran. Did you know about that? No. Look, I don't know anything about I'll that. Take it easy, Tony. I don't care what's been spread. I'm sure you did like I told you, Tony. Of course I did. And take it easy. Fallon, don't take a dive in the fourth. He won't. Don't worry. I'm not worried, Tony. But if he should take a dive, you're going to be in a tough spot, aren't you? I, uh... You're going to be in a tough spot, Tony. Now, suppose you turn on that radio... We'll see what Eddie Fallon does in the fourth. All right, that was station identification. Here we are back again at the city stadium ringside, bringing you the sensational fight between Eddie Fallon and Kid Cochran. There's a 10-second warning for the fourth round. Up to now, it's been Eddie Fallon all the way. But at the end of that third round, Cochran was looking a little better. All right, there's the bell, the fourth round, and George Petrie. Well, Fallon came out fast at the bell to reach Cochran with a straight left to the head, but the kids seem to shake it off all right, and both boys are circling each other warily now, looking for that opening. Cochran moves in now, throws a left jab to Fallon's face. Eddie just prances back, his hands dangling at his side. And Cochran throws a hard right hook that caught Eddie napping. Fallon's keeping those hands too low for a puncher like Cochran. There's another right to the same spot, and Eddie better get those hands up. And that was a beautiful left by the kid that rocked Eddie. I don't know what's the matter with Fallon unless that first right hurt him more than it seemed to from here. Oh, there's two vicious rights by Cochran, and he's back Eddie against the ropes. Believe it or not, Eddie's definitely in trouble now. The kid's measuring him. Fallon doesn't seem to be trying at all. Cochran sends a crushing right to the head. A left and a right by Cochran, and Eddie's going down. And one, two, Eddie's stretched out flat. Four, five. Eight. 
Close that transom, Nick. It's a draft. Sure. Ali! Sid, pull down the shades. Right. Ali, so help me, I didn't know. I wouldn't say a word if I were you, Tony. You're in a tough enough spot as it is. Dex told me the dive was off, honey, I swear Nick. it. Nick. Yeah? Hold him. No. Let go, please. Stand Nick. still, Tony. I twist your arm off. Nick, please. Stand still, he should. Okay, honey. All right. Tony, my syndicate had over 100,000 on Fallon. Over a hundred thousand, Tony. Adi, listen. I know what the fight looked like, but you're wrong. I'm just as surprised Stop as you. Stop lying, Tony. I don't like it. I'm not lying. I'm not. I had an idea you might try a switch on me, but I really didn't think you had the nerve. Said your knife. Adi, please. You gotta believe me. I like a knife, Tony. No noise. Just one quick shove. No, no, honey. It wasn't me. It was Max. Donny. You lousy little punk, yeah. You'll never pull a switch on anyone again, you and Max both. Oh, no, I have nothing to do with it. Hold him, Nick. Yeah. I told you what would happen, Tony. No. I told you. No, Ali, I swear to you, Ali, I... Hey, what the... Don't answer. Hold his mouth. <laughs> Shut up, you. Ali, the clerk downstairs knows he's in here. Yeah, okay. Ask who it is, Tony. You say the wrong thing, that's all you'll ever say. Remember that, Tony. All right, go ahead. Who... Who is it? Beats on him, Max. Oh, Max. Well, this will save us trouble. What a man said. Right. You're gonna have company, Tony. I'll show you how to kill two birds with one blade. Come right in, Max. We... Uh... All right, Max, do what the man says. Go right in. Hey, now, wait a minute. I'll take that gun, Sid. Frank. Inside, Max. You too, Sid. Arnie. Hey, what is this? FBI, Buckman, you're under arrest. What? I couldn't help it, Arnie. They made me. Never mind the tears, Max. Let's go, the lot of you. Go? We're taking you to headquarters. Now, shut up, Tony. Don't say a word. <laughs> Did you hear that, Arnie? We're going to go. They're taking us to headquarters. Shut up, I said. I said. We're under arrest, Arnie. They're taking us out of here. Well, I wouldn't try that, Nick. Don't you try anything either, Tony. <laughs> me? I wouldn't try anything, gentlemen. This is your round, believe me. I wouldn't try a single thing. <laughs> Tony Rizzo willingly provided the evidence that subsequently sent him back to prison and gave life suspensions from the ring to Max Stacy and Eddie Fallon. Arnie Buckman was brought to trial on a charge of assault with intent to kill and was sentenced to a penitentiary term of five years. With the individual penalties given and the Fallon-Cochran fight officially declared no contest, the files were closed on a fix that failed in the fourth round. in peace and war came to you through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.